Good evening and welcome to our show, Going Public. I'm Renee Fosica and joining us tonight from the Terrebonne Parish School District are Chris Brown, a local high school chemistry teacher, Amari Griffin, Dawson Abair, and Cody LaBeouf, junior and senior division science fair winners. The Terrebonne Parish School District recently held its annual science fair. This year, the outstanding senior division was Terrebonne High School with the outstanding senior division teacher being Ramona Boyd. The outstanding junior division school was Homer Junior High with the outstanding junior division teacher being Erica Carter. We have with us tonight Chris Brown, the chemistry teacher from South Terrebonne High School. Thank you for joining us tonight. No problem. Um, you are here pretty much to give us an overview of the science fair that takes place each year. Can you tell me the process of how our local students get to compete in the science fair each year? Okay, so each teacher probably does a little bit different, but the bottom line uh, to it all is the student, well, we generally give them some type of lesson on scientific methods and engineering procedures and that kind of thing. Then uh, the students will come up with their topic and us as teachers, we either approve them or disapprove them. They'll go through, rework the topic, do some more research. Then they'll end up, uh, if we approve the topic to go to the fair, uh, then they'll you know, design, complete their experiment, um, then actually perform the experiment. Then all culminates in the project board that they, they uh, at first go through the school fair. And if it's good enough, we send it to the parish fair where it competes. So okay. that's pretty much it. How long does the process normally take? Yeah, that's another one that kind of depends. I mean, we start off uh, teaching it at the very beginning of the school year, and my projects were due in December. Cody, December, you remember? December 20th, maybe? Yeah, something, something around there. So uh, we ended up in, doing that in December, and then ultimately the parish fair was in January. And I know you talked about the process, but how do the teachers support their students in the science fair and all of the work that goes into it? I think it differs um, for like the junior division. I think they would probably need some more uh, guidance throughout the year. But for me, I'm teaching chemistry. So most of these kids have done the project at least once before. So all I really do is I give them my expectations at the beginning of the year. Um, then they'll come up with their project. And after that, it's just I give them a little bit of guidance and I'll answer questions for them if I have to. But other than that, their work is their own. So I take no credit on, uh, on them winning. It's all their work. And it definitely is. I know it, a lot goes into it. My own children have done science fair projects in the past. Yeah. And how valuable is it to students as a learning activity? What are they getting from this? Well, I think science has an advantage over most of the other subjects. I mean, you're not just sitting in a classroom learning stuff. You get to do hands-on. So in chemistry, we get to do labs. Um, but over on top of all of that is a science project. It is designed for them to do a real-world application of the scientific method and actually solve a problem or find out, you know, what's going on with their particular problem for the science project. So definitely. I appreciate you coming tonight to give us that overview. Um, joining us also is our senior and junior division winners. Congratulations to you three. Um, first up, we have Amori Griffin, who is a seventh grader from Homer Junior High. He was the Junior Division Grand Prize winner. Your project was titled The Cheese Might Chase. What inspired your project? Well, I think what inspired my project was that I've been eating cheese all my life, and I knew that something basic wasn't going to win me the science fair. And I really had to think outside of the box to get an idea that was, you know, different. And what was the goal of your investigation? I know you just said it was definitely different and it was inspired by your like for cheese, your love for cheese. What was the goal of your investigation? Um, my goal was to see how many cheese mites were consumed per average. So after doing the experiment, I've seen a lot of different cheeses because we really had to experiment with that. It was quite hard looking through all the different types, but uh, it was quite enjoyable. Were your outcomes what you expected or was the outcome a surprise? To me, I thought that the outcome was a surprise because from what I had heard, um, cheese mites prefer to be on dry cheeses. But what I saw was that on Colby Jack, there was a cheese mite population of 23 as an average. 
Um, it could be higher or varying depending on, you know, the stronger the microscope. But uh, what we found out was Kobe Jack was a very, how do I say this? Sorry. It was, it wasn't what we expected because it wasn't a very dry, runny cheese. And how do you plan to use your results in the real world? I think that I could use this delving into more science experiments relating to the topic, but also as just a, something that I know. Something that you know, and it was driven by your passion. Mm -hmm. So also joining us tonight is Cody LaBeouf, an 11th grader from South Terrebonne High School who was our senior division grand prize winner. Cody, your project was a chemistry project titled Rocket Ready Go. What inspired you to work on your project? Well, I've always had a love for topics of like acceleration and other forms of physics and stuff. And so I was just like, what's a good project that incorporates most of them? And then came up with rockets. And from there, I just had to figure out what I was going to launch it with. So I used baking soda and vinegar. And what was the goal of your investigation? Well, it was to determine what ratio of baking soda to vinegar would produce the highest launch height, where baking soda was staying constant throughout the entire project as vinegar was increased by 0.5 milliliters. And every, every, oh, keep going. I'm every experiment. And were your outcomes what you were expecting, or was your outcome a surprise? Oh, not at all. The outcomes were oddly <laughs> weird. Like, we had some weird trials and... Well, in the third round of experiments where I increased to the volume of vinegar to 3.5 milliliters, and it had a really high form of acceleration that I really wasn't expecting. And how do you plan to use your results once you enter the real world? Well, there there's a few semi-practical applications that you could use it for. I mean, you could use it to test theoretical fuel systems for solid-state rockets and a few other things, but other than that, not much. All right. And then you also get to go to the International Science Fair. Is that correct? Yes, it's in Dallas in May. And what are your thoughts about that? Are you excited to attend? And what are your plans there? Oh, I'm, I'm really excited to attend. It's going to be so fun. Um, really, once I get there, we just got to set up the project board, wait, present, go see Dallas a little bit. Well, good. Good luck to you as well with that one. Um, also with us tonight is Dawson A. Bear, a ninth grader from HL Bourgeois who is the Senior Division Grand Prize runner-up. Congratulations, Dawson. Thank you. Your project was an animal science project titled Come Here, Deer. What inspired you for your project? Well, over the past few years, I've really started to admire deer hunting. And over those years, I've realized that it's not just about hunting deer. It's also about conservation. And then what was your project about? Well, you just, I know you talked about the deer, but what was the goal of your investigation? So I wanted to figure out what grass type would attract the most amount of deer. And so I used ryegrass, rapeseed, and oats, and I planted them on three different green fields in order to see which field had the most deer sightings. And then what were your outcomes and were they what you expected or were they surprises to you? Um, it was definitely a surprise. I really thought that ryegrass would have the most because it's a well-known grass by many hunters. And But as the season progressed, rape actually had way more deer sightings, which was really surprising. But as I did more research, I found out that rape seed is way more palatable for the deer, and it's a better cold tolerant than some of the other grasses. So did you have to set up deer cameras for your project? Yes, ma'am. I used trail cameras to take all my pictures. And how many deer did you approximately see in your videos? Um, at times, there were close to six or seven on a field. And sometimes there were none. So it really varied. That is neat. And how can you use your results in the real world? Well, there are millions of deer hunters in the United States. And... Even for future generation hunters, they could use this information so that they can have the most deer sightings in order to shoot better deer. And do you plan to participate in the science fair again next year? If the opportunity is available, absolutely. And then I have a pretty much a question for all three of you. Starting back with Amori, what was the hardest part of your experiment or project? 
Um, for me, I think that the hardest part was definitely the drawn out process of getting my microscope. I went through a duct chase to find that microscope. I landed on a smart microscope after looking around multiple schools for some and some of them were broken. I just didn't have the opportunity to get some. So that was one of your challenges. Cody, did you have any challenges or any hard, hard parts of your project? Well, mainly just the research side. You don't really see, oh, what's the average pressure produced by a random reaction of baking soda and vinegar? It's, it's just not common. So I just had to do a lot of research into different chemical reactions and stuff. So you also, Dawson, did you have any challenges as well? Um, definitely the preparation was a bit hard. We had to, you know, lime and fertilize and disc and then plant, and it was pretty difficult to get it ready. But as it was ready, it was definitely easy. It was easier. What location did you do yours in? Was it in Louisiana or did you go somewhere else? It's not far from the city of Quitman, Mississippi. Neat. That's awesome. All right. I want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, congratulations once again to all of you for being winners at the Science Fair. I hope to see you guys again next year after the Science Fair once again. I want to thank you, Mr. Brown, for taking time out of your day. No problem. I would like to thank you, our viewers, for watching. Don't forget to join us every Tuesday on Going Public. Good night.